All right, what's up, guys? Nito here, and welcome back to another episode of Noteworthy Interactions. So, today I am playing a cast wall channeling Lightning Conduit Necromancer. And the reason I chose ne Necromancer is because of this node right here, Corpse Pact, which says enemies near corpses you spawned recently are chilled and shocked. So, Lightning Conduit, the new skill, requires enemies to be shocked, and then it hits all shocked enemies in the area with a lightning bolt based on the size of the shock. So you want to scale shock effect as much as possible. And Corpse Pact by default does a 15% base shock. So the whole idea with this build is that we are scaling up the base shock effect from corpses. And then we are using Corpse Walker Boots to repeatedly spawn corpses as we move around. And it even spawns while we're cycloning. So we can cyclone around and then cast while channeling lightning conduit and that is basically the idea so first i'm just going to show you a map and, and you can see what it looks like um this is like one of my favorite builds of all time probably and you'll see why in a second so check this out All right, so as you can see, this is an excellent map and build. Uh, the clear is fantastic. The single target DPS is like, it's respectable. It's not amazing. It's not gonna like delete bosses in half a second, but it is pretty solid. And as far as defenses go, we are playing a Necromancer. We have Bone Offering at our disposal. And as you can see here, um, I am 64, 69 block, and that goes up to 75, 75 when my roomies is active. So we are max block most of the time. And um, some of the other things going on in the build. So you'll notice I am using Vortex while I cyclone around. So that's what these things on the ground are. And the reason I'm doing that is because of the Algor Mortis gloves. So these gloves give you a... Um, they increase the effect of your non-damaging ailments, which of course is important for scaling shock. Um, and then they're going to give you 32% increased lightning damage, or enemies take 32% increased lightning damage if they're in your chilling areas. So Vortex is a chilling area, so as long as enemies are inside of it, they're going to take 32% increased damage, which is a lot of damage. 
and it gives you 26% chance to sap enemies in the chilling area. And since we're scaling our uh, effective non-damaging ailments so much and our effective of lightning ailments so much, sap is going to be um, basically hitting everything for the maximum 20% less damage taken. So it's a really good uh, item for this build, just both defensively and offensively. And um, it really helps the build kind of come together. And the other defenses we got going on are um, Plaguebringer also gives... Uh, Nearby enemies deal 10% reduced damage with at least one corpse nearby. Since we have the corpse walker boots, there's always a corpse nearby because we're spawning multiple corpses every second. Then we also have Disciple of Katava Jewel here, which says every second consume a nearby corpse to recover 5% of life and mana. Um, we can basically ignore the 10% more damage taken downside here because we're always consuming corpses because there's always one nearby as long as we're moving around. And um, the life recovery doesn't really matter because we're low life. So we're, we're low life with pain attunement. We're using a shavs. And, um, but we do get essence glutton to help um, recover our mana. And, and the, the keystone here is going to consume corpses. And as long as you've consumed a corpse recently, you're going to be regenerating both energy shield and mana. So that helps to just like keep this up all the time. So we get some pretty solid regeneration and that's on top of our max block. And then um, we also get the 30% increased AOE from having consumed, consumed a course recently here. Um, and you get some extra attack and cast speed. And that's gonna be important because uh, Lightning Conduit actually has this modifier that says uh, this spell's cast time is added to its cooldown if triggered. And since we're triggering it with cast while channeling, um, we want to make sure that the cooldown or, or the cast time is low enough so that we can hit the 0.3 second cooldown for cast while channeling. And um, actually, it's it's technically not really even a cooldown. Uh, it's not affected by things like cooldown recovery rate. So um, that's the reason that Lightning Conduit, the base cast time of 0.5 seconds is not getting added to the 0.3 seconds for 0.8 it's actually overwriting the 0.3 seconds. So by default, it's going to be 0.5 seconds, and then you can scale that down with cast speed. So um, you can see that, uh, let's see, like right now, Lightning Conduit is 0.31, so that's a little too slow. However, once we are moving around, we're going to start consuming corpses automatically from our keystone. And um, you can see that once we've consumed some corpses, uh, it goes down to 0.3, and also, like, if we pop our Bone Offering, Bone Offering also is going to give us some, so then it goes even lower. Uh, you can see the cooldown is now 0.29, so it's it's low enough that we can always be proccing the uh, Lightning Conduit as, as soon as it's ready, um, as soon as it's off cooldown. So um, that's a really powerful interaction here. The other interesting thing we can do with this build so if you see on Awakened Cast While Channeling Support, it says avoid interruption from stuns while, while using supported skills. So what that means is that while we're channeling, we're effectively stun immune, but we can actually still get stunned. So we avoid the interruption, but we do still get stunned. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using Cast When Stunned. So this support right here, I think a lot of people forgot this thing even exists. Um, basically... Because we're uh, a low-life ES build and we don't have stun immunity, we're going to get stunned based on our life total, which is very low. So basically every hit, you know, in the end game, most hits are going to stun us. And that means there's going to be a 68% chance to cast all of the abilities linked with cast when stun support. And you'll notice that unlike cast when damage taken, there is no level requirement for cast when stunned. So we're triggering Molten Shell, level 21. We're triggering Bone Offering, level 21. And then it's getting plus two from our helmet. And then we're also tr triggering our Anomalous Lightning Golem, which is just mainly there for the extra cast speed it grants us. Because again, we need to get our uh, Lightning Conduit cast speed low enough so that the um, the trigger rate is, is reached. And um, that's... Let's see, what else is there? Oh yeah, so you need to scale the ailment effect on this build quite high, right? Because we're, we're, a, we're at a base of 
uh, 15. And if you if I hover over this enemy, you'll see that he has a 30% chill and a 65% shock. So we're actually getting the maximum shock value from our just our corpses, right? And um, it's you know it's independent of the enemy life. So unlike a shocking hit where it's using the enemy's ailment threshold to calculate whether or not it's going to um, be able to shock them for a high amount. This is always shocking for 15% base, and then we're just scaling up that base effect. So we're always going to be shocking all enemies, regardless of you know how tanky they are, um, for that 65% shock. And so that's that's with the um, where is it the plus 15% max effect of shock lightning mastery, and then as you can see, we also have the non crit strikes is lucky for lightning damage. Um, very powerful because this is obviously a non crit build. And the other way we're scaling our um, non-damaging ailments is with a uh, Timeless Jewel, Militant Faith. So you see it has 3% increased effect of non-damaging ailments on enemies per 10 devotion. And that's just going to like count up all the things in, in range. And, um, you know, we get a bunch of devotion from, from everything in this area. And then we're also using Inner Conviction, which gives 3% more spell damage per power charge. And... Um, we're combining that with Storm Rider, which is from a cluster duel here. And you can see it says 10% chance to gain a power charge when you shock a chilled enemy. So because we're chilling and shocking everything, and you know, every second we're shocking and chilling multiple times, um, we basically always have full power charges up. So that's just going to be a nice little more multiplier to our damage there. And then um, even though this says you can't, uh, it, it says gain power charges instead of frenzy charges, we still have a minimum frenzy charge on some of our gear, so you can get frenzy charges through minimum charges because you're not actually gaining them. Uh, you just have them all the time. Uh, and then as far as auras, we're running uh, Purity of Elements. So we are using the Annihilating Light uh, staff, which gives us triple damage with elemental skills. However, it reduces our elemental resistances pretty drastically. So we need a lot, a lot of elemental resistance for this build. And that's why we run a Purity of Elements, which also gives us immunity to all elemental ailments. So that's just really valuable. Um, we actually have that on on our life, uh, our life reservation, and it's linked to Anomalous Arrogance support, which has 20% increased uh, aura effect on it. So it's going to reserve life, and it's going to get a little bit of an extra boost from that aura effect um, there. And then um, we're also running Defiant Spanner and Determination and Zealotry. Um, Ideally, Wrath would be better than Zealotry, but I hit the Zealotry Reservation uh, Efficiency mod on my amulet, and, you know, I I decided that it wasn't worth trying to craft a better amulet than this that would have the Wrath Reservation or, you know, some other reservation for one of the other auras. Um, and so I decided to just stick with Zealotry because it's good enough. Um, but you can see also on our amulet, we have 30% increased effective non-damaging amulets there. And we are anointing Ash, Frost, and Storm, which is even more effective non-damaging ailments. Um, so that's how we're scaling that. And then um, one of the implicits on our helmet is also going to be increased effective non-damaging ailments. And we are also using the Trigger on Focus mod here. And we are triggering Bone Offering, Frost Shield, and Wave of Conviction. So um, that's going to be... Focus is an instant skill, so you can be cycloning around. And then you just pop it, and it, all three of those abilities just go off at once. So it's a way to keep your bone op your bone offering up all the time without having to like stop and recast it. Um, although we also get bone offering casted automatically when we're getting hit, so um, that's from the cast when stun support that I had pointed out. Um, and I don't know if you can even see it here, but let's see if I can not kill one of these enemies. No. Um, I'm doing a little too much damage. I should have sh pointed this out on the boss, but um, I wanted to just show that everything is getting sapped for 20%, which is the full sap value. Um, and again, that's from these gloves right here, the Elgar Mortis, 26% chance to sap enemies in chilling areas. Um, so, the uh, yeah, that's basically the whole idea of this build, is to just scale up ailment effect as much as possible and then take advantage of as many of those ailments as possible. So, like... We have Breath of Lightning, that's 50% increased effective ailments. We have Static Blows, that's increased effective ailments, increased effective lightning ailments. Um, over here, we have Elemental Mastery, increased effective non-damaging ailments, increased effective non-damaging ailments. So 
all of that stuff together is just going to give us really, really good shocks and chills and saps. And all together, it works quite well, as you can see. Um, the only thing is our energy shield is a little bit low. Um, hoping to get that a bit higher with a couple more levels and some better gear. But overall, I've been extremely pleased with how this build has performed. You know, as you can see in that map, it's it's just this is a tier 16 map, by the way, uh, with, you know, fairly juiced with multiple um, scarabs and things like that on it. And, you know, this this build has just been a dream to play. Um, I, I had started as kind of a sort of weird hybrid setup where I didn't have the shavs yet. So I was like low life with petrified blood and then I had some shield on top of that. But uh, chaos damage was a real issue for us there, and um, we couldn't really uh, survive nearly as well um, without, you know, without the shavs. So now that I have the shavs, um, it's feeling just so much smoother to play. And you know, even though the the total energy shield is fairly low because we're seventy five seventy five max block, and because we have twenty percent less damage taken from sap. 10% reduced damage taken um, from our Ascendancy and about 15 to 20,000 armor. Uh, yeah, like with flasks and stuff up, you know, armor goes up to you know, even higher than that. Um, so, yeah, all in all, it feels pretty solid, pretty tanky. We have pretty good recovery. We've got some energy shield leech. We've got a bunch of regeneration from our, um, from our Ascendancy. So, like, Overall, just a really well-rounded build, and I'm super, like, th this is just one of my favorite builds that I've ever played, honestly. Like, it's just so enjoyable. Would highly recommend it. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've probably spent, I don't know, 10 to 15 Divines on this build. Um, and that's, like, including a six Lincoln Gems and stuff like that. Um, I've pretty much just dumped all of my currency into crafting stuff for it. Like this helmet, I got honestly really lucky crafting. Um, the you know I I accidentally hit the plus two minion skill gems, which is a, a very low weighting. You don't need it for this build. It's not required at all. It doesn't really do anything except for you know plus two levels to bone offering, which gives you one percent block chance. So like you definitely don't need stuff like that. Um, you know just just like a plus one lightning skills amulet with some energy shield and then the I conquer exalted it for to hit the zealotry mod on there. Um, you know, I got a, a really nice mirrored ring actually that I found um, on trade and just, you know, it was actually fairly cheap, but it, it just has a ton of energy shield and some resistances. And interestingly enough, it has all positive mods, um, which is kind of cool. And before I saw this ring, I didn't even know that could happen, but apparently it can. And then you know, the rest of the gear is pretty straightforward, just like some, you know, some stats, strength, um, resistance, all of that, lots of res resistance on our belt. Ideally, the, um, the, you know, the crit chance against shocked enemies doesn't really do much for us. You know, it helps keep our uh, elemental overload up, but, you know, that's kind of up all the time anyways. It's not really needed, but, um, you know, ideally you would want, like, extra energy shield on there or um, like extra lightning damage or something instead, but I wasn't able to get that. Um, and then, yeah, you got just Corpse Walker boots, which by the way, these were updated in 3.19 and now they give you 1% increased movement speed for each corpse nearby. So you can, as you can see, like once I'm, um, you know, in this map, see how like when I'm in an area of stuff that, that's been killed, I can just run much faster. Um, and that's just because of the extra movement speed you get from corpses. So it just helps mapping feel really nice and smooth. And overall, yeah, I just, I love this build and I'm going to probably keep playing it for a while. Um, it's been super fun. So anyways, thank you for watching. And, um, I just want to shout out my discord one more time. Uh, it's a great place to come and discuss the game and do some theory crafting and talk about your own unique interactions that you've discovered. And, um, I'll, I will leave a link to that in the description. So anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.